Hey guys, Morphologist here for another video on Space Engineers. As a follow-up to my video I posted earlier this week of a new blast door design, today's video is all about how to build your own blast door using two pistons and a merge block. Now, if you weren't with me earlier this week to see the video, I showcased a design with two control arms that connected to a single door that spun in the same direction. However, I later discovered there was a better way to do it. By having the arms spin in the opposite direction, they would only take up a limited amount of space above the door. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the better way to put together a blast door. So without further ado, let's begin! For the first step, create a new map in creative mode. Default, thruster damage and autosave will be on. Deactivate both of them. This will prevent your map from saving unintentionally after you've made a mistake. If you prefer to use your own ship or map instead, simply go to load world, select the map that you would like to create the door on, select save as, and save it as a new name. And you have a copy of your map so that you don't destroy the version that you currently have. After you've created your new copy, simply go to edit and disable thruster damage and autosave. Now we're ready to start building your door. Let's start first by setting up your toolbar. You can clean the toolbar by right clicking the existing items. Next, fill your toolbar with the following. A heavy armor block, a rotor, a gyroscope, a small generator, a cockpit, a merge block, thruster, and finally, a small 1x1 tire. Now we're ready to begin. Let's start by building at the edge of the platform. If you're building somewhere pre-constructed, make sure you give yourself at least one block clearance below where the door will sit. Clear a row of five blocks by holding control, right clicking, and dragging to the either left or right. Afterward, create two vertical columns of eight blocks high on both sides of the five block hole that you've just created. Just as a note, the platform is where the exterior of the door will be facing when this project is completed. In addition, if you're following this tutorial, the end result will be approximately 9 wide by 3 high for your blast door. If you prefer to make a larger door, space your columns further apart and make them higher. When you're comfortable with the positioning of your columns, add a single rotor facing outward to the left column. Immediately following, Add a temporary cockpit so that we can access your control panel. Once inside, press K to pull up the control panel. Then find the rotor that you've just created and rename it to left rotor. Afterwards, repeat the process for the right rotor on the right column. This will be important for the later stages of creating your blast door. After we've created both the first rotors, let's group them together. Hold shift and select both rotors, go to the right, and create a new name. Then hit save. Your new group should appear at the upper left hand corner in the list in asterisk if you've done it correctly. Now let's start creating those arms for your doors. Create a line of blocks two blocks long on both of your rotors. When you're satisfied with the length of your arms, attach two additional rotors to the ends facing outward. Next, let's create the second set of arms. Place a block on both rotors that you've just created and drag out to three blocks long. Now, let's place your last set of rotors at the ends of the arms you've just created, but facing inward. Please note that larger doors will require longer arms to control them. Also, be sure to make your upper arms short enough so that they do not conflict with one another in the open position. At this point, I suggest you save your progress just in case. Once you've saved, it's time to start creating both halves of your door. So make both halves approximately 3x3 three three blocks large. But before we can join these two halves together, we first have to place a rail. So create a column two blocks away from the right side of the right door and make the column approximately five blocks high. When you've placed your column, it's then time to start adding the tires which will serve as your rail system for your door. But make sure that you rotate the tire so that the small rim is facing the door, otherwise it will not work as a rail system for your new blast door. It is important to note that you must place the rail system before you finish the door. This is because you can't place the tires next to an already created block, but you can place new blocks next to already created tires. After you've made your door nice and snug up against that new rail that you've just created, it's time to join both halves together. 
So save your progress now, just in case something goes wrong. Next, let's change the braking torque for both the rotors on the left arm, just to prevent it from moving around too much when we join both halves together with a merge block. So create two terminals on both arms that you've created on the left side door. When you've entered the new terminal that you've created, press K and go to braking torque on the menu for your rotor. Grab the toggle and drag it to around 100. Repeat this process for both parts of your door, but do not adjust it for your station or ship. After your rotors have been adjusted, we're going to convert your left door temporarily into a ship, but we will only require two thrusters for this to work, so place one for going backward and going forward. Then place a generator and gyroscope. As a final step, clear two blocks to create a cockpit and a merge block. For those of you who've decided to create this in survival mode, an alternative would be to attach a ship to your left door and fly it back and forth until you get both sides connected. But if you're following my tutorial, the next step is simple. Enter your new cockpit and reverse slightly from your door, but be careful not to move your mouse too much or you might come off the rotor. After you're a few blocks away from the other half of the door, it's time to get out of your cockpit and place the other merge block on the other half of the door. Before you go any further, make sure you save, because this next part can get really, really buggy. After you've saved your progress so far, it's time to get back into the cockpit of your door. We're gonna fly gently into the other half, but don't be afraid to take your time in this step because if you fly too fast, it may just not work. If you're successful, it'll suck to the other block and turn green. When it's connected, tap forward slightly to make sure it's up against that right rail snugly. Now it's okay to connect both halves and delete the merge blocks and ship components, but make sure that you connect it first before you delete the merge blocks, otherwise they'll become two parts once again. Our door is nearly fully formed, all that's left is to change the braking torque on the left arm back to zero and create the left rail and left part of the door. After you've finished creating these last few parts, we're going to make this door actually move. To avoid confusion, I suggest you make a new terminal facing the inside of your door. Once inside of your new terminal, select the rotor group that we created earlier and turn the group off. Then go to braking torque and adjust it to one meganewton. Next, we need to start adjusting the left and right rotor separately so that when they spin open, they spin in the opposite direction and stop at the correct position. If you're starting to feel a little overwhelmed, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the process. First order of business is adjusting the left rotor's limit to how high it can go before it stops and the blast door is open. For that, we need to adjust the left rotor's lower limit to negative 90. This is because it's spinning in a counterclockwise motion. After that, we're going to adjust the upper limit, which is the position when the door is closed. Now, usually you could set it to zero degrees, but being too close to a surface could end up damaging it. So I suggest setting it slightly above the surface that you want the door to rest. That would be approximately negative three to negative 10 degrees. In order for you to better understand what the angles mean for the door's position, I have created this diagram to visually represent what degrees actually mean for the door in this design. I invite you now to pause for just a moment to study the diagram. Good, now that you've studied it, you'll notice that because the left rotor is spinning counterclockwise, it will end at a negative degree, and because the right one spins in a positive direction, it will end at a positive angle. And that's why for this next step, we're going to set the right rotor opposite of the left rotor, and that the upper limit is going to be 90, and the lower limit is going to be around three to five. For this step, again remember to set it slowly, because as you set the limits, the door will actually move. If you set it too quickly, it could actually jolt the door off the rotor. Now that both of your rotors have been set up for the angles that they will stop, it's time to set the velocity that they're going to spin. In this first part, I want you to select both of them together and adjust the velocity together in either a positive or negative direction. This is because if you set them separately, it could actually not be the exact same velocity due to the inaccuracy of the slider. Afterward, find the rotor that doesn't have a matching negative or positive RPM and hit reverse, only on that single rotor, 
not on both, so that the left rotor has a negative velocity and the right rotor has a positive velocity. Now we can activate your rotor and we can assume that both of them will spin at the exact same speed. And voila, we have a working blaster that has two control arms to make it more stable. If you want to open and close your new door, simply go back to your blast door group that you created for both rotors and hit reverse. You don't have to turn it off. Great, it's going in the opposite direction. At this point, we can start dressing the door up. That means covering up the tracks and starting to get rid of the original columns that we built the rotors on, but that's only after we've created a new structure for the rotors to hang off of. Please remember not to delete the block that the rotor is attached to, or you will lose the rotor and the door. Also know where your rotors are closing so that you don't put blocks in the way of the mechanism, because if they get in the way, you'll break the door. Oh, and I forgot to remind you guys, save. As the last part of this video, I wanted to address a question that was posed to me on my YouTube channel and the forums earlier this week, and that's, will this explode if you try to put it on a ship? The answer is absolutely, positively no. Not only will it not explode, but you will actually be able to use it while doing barrel rolls. So I'm really excited to see what the community will do with this design. And I want to thank you guys for waiting for so long for me to put this video out. It ended up being a lot more work than I had previously thought. So if you liked the video, if you liked the content, and if you'd like to see more, be sure you hit like, subscribe, and let me know what you thought in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time.